Yeah, Ikhwan wa Akhwan wa Tafila. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brothers and sisters, before we begin, we request that everyone who has a cell phone or electronic device, please be sure to put it on silent or vibrate, inshallah. In alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah wa kafa, wa salatu wa salamu ala ashraful anbiya wa mursaleen, Sayyidina wa Habibina al-Mustafa, Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa salam. ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم ثم أما بعد فإن أستك الحديث كلام الله وخير هدى هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم والشر أمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة دلالة وكل دلالة في نار we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this gathering for Jumu'ah. And we ask that in this gathering that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept our worship. He will accept our good deeds. He will forgive us for any by which when dua is made during the hour, no dua is rejected. I mean, as some of you may know that each year there's an organization that's called the WEF or the World Economic Forum the World Economic Forum. And this uh, group, they each year they gather in Switzerland and they have a four day conference and they discuss about the issues of the global economy and how to rectify the global economy, economy and make it better. And this is a gathering of big, big people, politicians, ambassadors, celebrities and all the like in this invitation only. So everyone is not privy to this meeting and everyone is not allowed to come. This year in 2021, they had a meeting and they were discussing something, a topic which they call the Great Reset, the Great Reset Initiative. And the Great Reset Initiative was a discussion revolving around the COVID crisis, the coronavirus crisis, the pandemic, and how the long-term consequences of this pandemic, the longer we go in it, the more problems that we have in the economy, the more problems people will have with their health and their psychological well-being and all of the like. So they're trying to determine how to make things better or how to make things go back to normal. Because right now, in the midst of this pandemic, people have suffered from economic growth. They've been deprived of economic growth. Public debt is at, public debt is at an all-time high. Unemployment is high. And human well-being all around the board is at great risk. Now check this out. The executive of the WEF, his name is Klaus Schwab. He says something very important because you know these people, they talk in coded language. You think it's English language, but it's a code for all the people who are connected to them. He said, 
The pandemic represents a rare but narrow opportunity to reflect, reimagine, and reset our world. The pandemic represents a rare and narrow opportunity to reflect, reimagine, and reset our world. So it goes without saying that if these people have an invitation only a bit in Switzerland, it don't have nothing to do with us, where we live, and how we operate. But it has everything to do with us because it's going to impact our well-being and how we live and how we operate and how we make money. So you know, you don't hear about this term anymore. We call the new world order. You don't hear about this term. But the coronavirus, the pandemic, is a cover to reset the world. And when they're talking about reset the world, they're not talking about resetting it back to how it was normal. They're talking about resetting it where they have total autonomy and control over people like us. You know, now we're in this wave of digital currency. They're trying to uh, create a cashless society. What does that mean for us? If your currency is digital, that means that any time somebody with a machine can shut down your operation because it's all digital. And if you've been paying attention, looking through our society, in the past few years, they've had dry runs. When the power went out or people lost their uh, family first access to their uh, benefits, these are dry runs. And these people have been planning this for decades. They're not like us. We plan for the weekend. We turn up on the weekend. They are planning for decades for world control while we're sleeping. So he said, he, he said a cold word that this is an opportunity for us to get a jump on the population. Because you know, these people under the guise of shaitan, as Allah who's dependent with the Allah decree, shaitan will mislead many of them. And Allah who's dependent with the Allah didn't say specifically how people will be misled. But the misleading will look like guidance. It will look like prosperity. That's the tricks of shaitan. When he whispers to you, it looks like something that can benefit you. But all the while, it is misleading you away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they are not talking about getting us back to a quality of life. They're talking about having centralized control of a population. They're talking about depopulating the current uh, people in the earth. They're saying it's too many. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us that there's provision for every person that comes into existence because he is the one who provided it. They're saying, no. We want it all. We don't want people to have it. And we want some of these people to go. And you can make the connection, some of the things that they're doing and trying to depopulate us, de depopulate the population. And they have known why he said that this COVID this pandemic is a prime opportunity because when people live in fear, they are ready to give up their liberties. It is equivalent to when we ran the streets and if somebody pulled a shotgun on you, you know, we used to call it, make, a, make a somebody do a dance. You put a gun in somebody's face, they do whatever you tell them. This coronavirus is that gun. They're waving it in our face. They're going to stretch this out. So we think things going back to normal, forget about it. They are getting their plan and their agenda. They've been planning to keep the population in control, to take away our rights, to take away our liberties. You think, oh, this is a coincidence? Mandatory vaccines? lockdowns, all of these things, they are stripping you of your rights. And because we are fearing a disease, many of us are going for it. Already 200 million people have been vaccinated in this country. Healthy people who otherwise would not have taken the vaccine because there would be no need for it. But because they projected this fear on us, a lot of, all, of, all of us are doing the dance. A lot of us are doing a dance. We ask Allah who's dependent with the Allah for safety. So now, cast society, increase surveillance, invasion of privacy, making things mandatory for us. All of this is part of it. But we're not here to talk about that today because we can go on and on and on. What we're here to talk about is our own reset in Islam. And Ramadan is the great reset for us. Ramadan is the great reset initiative, the one that we should be paying attention to. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Quran, A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim, bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Shahru Ramadan, alladhi unzila fihi al-Quran, huda li nas. 
The month of Ramadan is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the Quran. For what? Who died For God is for all of mankind. Whoever wills, whoever wants to come into this thing is free and it's open. It's not exclusive. Some religions, you have to be a certain race. You have to be a certain status to enter into that. When in Islam, if you believe that there is no God but God Almighty, Allah who subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his final messenger, Ahlam wa sahlam. It's very simple. And uh, the Quran is clear proofs and a criterion, a four kind, the thing to show you what is right and what is wrong. And that's how we live our lives. We read the Quran and we determine from the book of Allah what is right and what is wrong, and we try to practice it as best as we are able. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every year this month comes around, it is an opportunity for us to reset ourselves. Think about the 11 months. We've been negligent. We've been deficient. We've been, we, we know, we haven't really held up our part of the deal of la ilaha illallah as we very well could be. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows this. And yet every single year, he gives you an opportunity to reset yourself. But reset yourself in a way that's going to refine you and make you better, not to, not to put you under surveillance, not to take away your liberties. Islam came to free us. Islam is the answer to slavery in this country. Islam is redemptive for us. And Allah who's a panel with the eye gave it to us without any need. He gave it to us where it won't increase his majesty in the least. And he gave it to us for a purpose so that we may be mindful of who is the one who gave us everything that we need in existence. Before we realize that we needed it, Allah who's a panel with the eye put everything that you will ever need in this earth for your use. And he gave us the freedom to discover it on our own. And when we make the effort to discover the ni'mah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the pathways open up. And we keep consistent in that. And that's how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows us guidance. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says further in the Quran, in the same ayat, you read Allah who become al yusra, wala you read who become al usra. He intends for you ease, and he do not. He does not intend for you difficult. He is talking specifically about the fast of Ramadan, because even when we anticipate it every year, there's a little difficulty in it, and that's why Allah is the with the island, the one who was not able to fast, the sick, the old, or whoever has an excuse, they are exempt. And if a person has to break that fast for some reason, they can make it up. And Allah forbid that some of us break our fast intentionally. You have to make you have to make it up by fasting 60 to two, two months or feeding 60 people. So Allah was dependent with the island make this thing easy all around the board. And every year that we've been alive, Allah was dependent with the island blesses us with the opportunity to reset ourselves. Not change our pattern or reformat our pattern, but reset. Start over. Delete the previous history. Delete your previous browsing history and start brand new from that very month. Think about that nimma from Allah who's subhanahu wa ta'ala. How much mercy he contained in this month. How much forgiveness he had contained in this month. The opportunity to be free from the hellfire in this month. The opportunity to, accept, to witness a night that's worth a thousand months in this month. An opportunity for every single deed that you do for his sake, 10 to 700 times a reward. And that's on top of what Allah is dependent with the Allah rewards as a standard. And can we say Allah has a standard? <laughs> Not in re any real sense, but Allah is dependent with the Allah. Yeah, Allah. So then Allah is dependent with the Allah says, the purpose of the fast. While he took me little iddata, while he took kabirullah ayla ma hadakum, while ayla kum tashkurum. And that he wants you to complete the period of fasting, 29 to 30 days, and to glorify him, to make his name great, to what he has guided you. For what purpose? One purpose that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is looking for us. 
in order that you may be grateful that for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you guidance, give you the criteria, give you the ability to make tawbah, give you the ability to pray, give you the ability to think, and give you the ability to cease to some of the things that they are putting on us. The Muslims are supposed to see it clear. You have the Quran. Sit down from the heavens on the heart of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, preserved right to this very day. Millions and millions of people around the world have put this in their chest. And as we reset during this great reset of Ramadan, make sure we work on changing and not just taking a break from those other 11 months. You got to come out of this thing a new person. You won't forget the things that you've done. You won't have a new life, but you should have a new outlook and a new focus and a new reset for Allah who's dependent with the island. And in that sense, things should not be the same for us as believers. After leaving this month, things should never be the same. And this is preparation for this worldly life because they're not going to make things the same. They're working on subjugating us again. You know, if they could bring slavery back like they had it before, they would do it. This so-called democracy to give you freedom, they've been working for decades how to circumvent the laws that they put. Were they supposed to give you freedom, justice, and equality and all of these myths that they say? Except if you're Black or Hispanic. So Allah who's dependent with the Allah prepares us for every single thing. The Muslims should never be caught off guard. The Muslims should never be under any wonder what's going on in this world. Why? Because we know it's temporary. We know it's fleeting. We know that this thing is going to come to an end. Think about the reset we have every day. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna salata tanha anna the fahshahi wal munkar wala dhikrullahi akbar wallahu ya'lamu ma tasna'un. He says, indeed the prayer, it prohibits you from immorality and wrongdoing, and the remembrance of Allah is greater. And Allah knows what you do. Five times a day or more, you have an opportunity to reset yourself. And in between those lots, you can make tawbah, you can make dua, you can do good deeds, you can reflect on what you did from salat to salat, and the next one to have you more concentrated. And then the month of Ramadan comes, and then it's intensified. All to show gratitude to Allah who's dependent with the island. We have to ask ourselves constantly, what are we doing? This is bigger than not eating. This is bigger than lowering the gaze. This is bigger than not cussing. This is lillah. This is for Allah who's dependent with the island. And when we do it for Allah who's dependent with the island, don't look for comfort. Look to take the hard way. Look to take the rough road. And that's how Allah is dependent with the Allah makes it easy for you. When you take that initiative, reset yourself between East Salat. Analyze yourself from East Salat. You know, we used to, used to watch sports and football, right? And you see some of the football players when they get off the court, I mean, when they get off the field and they start taking notes about how was that play, what they missed, what passes got dropped, whatever. Analyzing themselves. That is how we have to be between each salat. Brothers, move forward, inshallah. That is how we have to be between each salat. It is something that is called muhasaba, taking account of yourself. Thinking about your deeds, your bad deeds, your bad thoughts, your good thoughts. What are you saying to people? How are you approaching things? What environments are you in? Who are you around? Taking inventory of yourself is how you reset yourself. And the more that the Salah has an impact on you, and the more that Ramadan has an impact on you, as it should, because Allah is apparent with Allah already decreed is going to do what it's supposed to do. Every year to show us we need to do more than what we've been doing. And the reset means we have to elevate every single year. We can't be the same person from last year. We can't be the same person from 10 years ago. And it shouldn't matter if somebody tells us you're not the same. You doggone right. Not the same. This thing has had an impact on my heart and my mind and my soul and my being. That is what stripped up to Allah who's a panel with the island is. 
And then we have a reset in general. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, فَمَنْ تَابَ مِنْ بَعْدِ ذُلْمِهِ وَأَسْلَهَا فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ يَتُوبُ عَلَيْهِ Whoever repents after his wrongdoing and he reforms, indeed, إِنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُورُ الرَّحِيمِ That for sure that Allah is forgiven and he is merciful. That is every single day, at any given time. Think about what we're doing. Recognize with the Furqan, the criterion to show us between what is right and wrong. Examine each and every day. Was this right? Was it for Allah? Was this wrong? What is leading me to hell? And that keeps you busy. Never talk about unemployment with a Muslim. You got work as a servant of Allah who's dependent with the Allah that pay different. You don't chase no bag with this one. Allah send you the bag when you perfect it. This is standard. You do something wrong, repent. When you repent, if you wrong someone, the rights of a person, which is one that a person will be called to account on Yom Kiyama more than anything else. Abusing the rights of others. If you abuse yourself and you wrong yourself, fine. Make Tauba, be done with it. But if you make Tauba and you don't make things right with people that you wrong, that can show up on Yom Kiyama. That is something to make the hairs on your neck stand up, as it should. We ask Allah who's dependent with the Allah for safety and to give us the ability to reset ourselves. I mean, aqulu kauli hada, istak for Allah wali wa lakum, istak for ruhu, a inna hu hu al ghafur rahim. In Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulihi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Inna Allah wa malaikatuhu yusalluna ala nabi. Ya ayuhal ladina amanu sallu alayhi wa salimu taslima. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Hama salayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim. Inna ka hamidun majid. Allahumma barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim. Inna ka hamidun majid. Brothers, try to move a little closer, inshallah ta'ala. Brothers and sisters, we make the second part very brief, inshallah ta'ala. But we need to pay attention to this great reset initiative that Allah who's dependent with ta'ala gives us every day and every year and every moment to rectify ourselves. This heart that he put in our chest, we got to return it in a pure state. You know, the heart, they can transport, transplant the heart, but they can't reset it. Your heart starts beating before you come into existence, before you are developed in your mom's womb. Your heart beats first, before the development of your skins and bones. And that thing ticks without any kind of disruption from the time that you came into existence. It can't be reset. You should read a book that's called The Marbles of the Heart. Read a book called The Marbles of the Heart. Not only does it discuss the physiological things of the heart and how it works and how if the heart, would, you know, how it, the, the, the mileage that goes throughout your blood pumping in your, in, your, in your body, the spiritual dimensions of the heart. Because, you know, they say that the heart has neurons like the brain and that your heart will have its own mind at times. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he gave apple to your heart. This is why the Prophet sallallahu a person came to him, he said, to advise me. The Prophet sallallahu said, consult your heart. Your heart will always tell you. And if it's corrupted, maybe it might, you might get mixed messages. That's why you got to work on purifying. That's why you got to keep it clean. That's why you got to keep it free of blemish. Even things that settle in the heart that might not even come into existence. Those things are sins of the heart, as many scholars have explained. When we get to a level, start examining those things that are lurking in the heart. In some way or another, we're not dealing with them, they come out. Pay attention, because we got to get this thing back to Allah, who's dependent with the Allah and the pure state that he gave it to us. And how hard is that? How many of us, not only our spiritual hearts are dead, we're having health issues with our hearts. 
It's no coincidence in this land of kufr. This is a land of kufr. The number one killer is heart disease. No coincidence about it. But getting back to this great reset, we have to work on resetting ourselves constantly before the real great reset. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will level this whole thing that we know is existence. Mountains crumble to dust. The sun being brought near. People laid out in droves. And we're seeing all of the signs of the hour, both minor and major. And now we are at a point, if we're paying attention, we should just be waiting on the hour and preparing ourselves as such. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one ayat described. Ya ayyuhal nas, itaku rabbakum. Oh, mankind, not just Muslim. Every single soul that came into existence, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is dressing them. Yeah, you had nasi. Taqo rabbukum. Fear your Lord. Because the people that don't acknowledge Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is still the Lord of them. He said, verily, the convulsion of the hour will be a thing that is tremendous. Avin, it will be great when the hour comes. How will it come? We won't know. We won't expect it. It'll come all of a sudden. We know all of the signs. We know what around about when it will happen, but we don't know the exact moment. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will crumble this thing we know as existence to dust and raise people up and the horn will be blown. The trumpet will be sounded. And everyone will be resurrected in the state that they died. And everyone will be called to account and be judged for what they did in this life. And then ultimately, a person will be given their reward or their punishment based on their iman. So think about how important this great reset is. Because the great reset for us in this dunya is denying ourselves. We've been conditioned to get more, to do more, to have more, to access more, to own more. But get to the point where you need less and less and less. And the point you get to, you need less and less and less. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send you more and more. And then don't, we're not even talking about what he has stored up for the people who have iman in the next life. That's what we're living for. The everlasting life. This one we got to get through. This little 40 or 50 or 60 years or however. Get through it. Deal with the pain. Deal with the shortcomings. Deal with the sorrow. On the other side, there's eternal bliss. And that's what we should put in our minds, even though we know it's a possibility that any of us could go to hell. And Allah forbid. And even if we go, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will pull you out. By way of la ilaha illallah. Focus on your great reset from salat to salat, jumu'ah to jumu'ah. Week to week, day to day, month to month, salat to salat, Ramadan to Ramadan. Keep yourself in a state of mind that you focus on your akhirah. Don't let this dunya distract you. Because these people with this great reset that they're trying to do, why are they putting all of their energy into it? They don't believe in that. They're trying to go to the you know, other planets and find civilization. Delusion. Find a way to live forever. Delusion. Find a way to play along with Sopranos with the island. Delusion. The Muslims are not deluded about anything. We worship Allah who's dependent with the Allah. We do our duty according to the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and we keep going until Allah who's dependent with the Allah calls us back. It's not always fun. It's not supposed to be fun. It's not supposed to be comfort. It's supposed to be a little difficult. A little hardship. And along the journey, Allah who's dependent with the Allah brings you raises you up in degree every time. And it'll never be the same again. In this dunya, and it'll never be the same again for us if we examine this great reset initiative in Ramadan. Take this lad, these next 20 days, 19 days, and make sure you reset yourself. Do some muhasabah. What prayers have you missed? How much time has elapsed and you wasted? How many good deeds have you fell short of doing? Because real good deeds are the ones that, that inconvenience you, not the easy ones. Do the ones that are hard. 
It's like we learned in school. You do the hard problems first. Get them out the way. You tackle the hard stuff first. And reset before the reset. Because we got every chance in the world until the soul reaches the throne. And you don't know when that is. So but that means every moment. You read some of the righteous scholars from the past. They used to be engaged in dicker that they didn't even talk to people. One of the scholars, he was making dicker and someone was talking to him. And they said, why didn't you answer me? My dicker is more important. When I finish, then I'll tend to you. You're doing it. This dicker is for Allah who's the kind of what I am. They didn't mind being ruled for Allah who's the of what the Allah. And not that we should be ruled. But when you are engaged in something for Allah who's the with the Allah, it requires all of your focus. It requires your dire attention. And we have to honestly tell ourselves and analyze ourselves, we're not giving Allah this due attention. Yeah, we're praying and we're fasting, but we got a lot of rectification to do. We've been harmed by this dunya. We've been abused by this dunya. We've been taken advantage of by this worldly life. And Allah who's dependent with the Allah, no coincidence, he brought us to Islam. Think about the time you came into Islam. And think about the mysticism that was surrounding it, that brought you to it. Usually a circumstance that led you to it, or a real conviction, just like the early Sahabas. May Allah be pleased with them. It was conviction that brought them to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They didn't second guess it. And that's how many of us were. When we knew and we were convinced that Allah was dependent with the Allah was the one and only, we enter into Islam. And whether we are converts or we were born Muslim, it don't matter. If we were born Muslim, we gotta work extra hard because we've been given a favor right from the very beginning. Didn't have to go through church, go through doctrine that contaminated us, go through stages of Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honored us in so many ways. For what reason? Never forget. In order that we may be thankful. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase us in shukr. I mean, Allah salat. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah, Hayya ala salah,